Hi and welcome to Simplifying Surds. Uh, just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So just to start, um, a quick definition of what a surd actually is. It's an irrational number, something where, uh, where if you wrote it out as a, as a decimal, it would go on forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's written as a square root which cannot be reduced to a whole number. So I just want to start by having a quick look at uh, some values here and decide which of these are thirds and which of them are not. Um, so the first one is root 9. So root 9 is, uh, can we work out the answer to that as a whole number? Well the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. And because we can do that, root 9 is not a third. Um, root 7. Now, is 7 a square number? 7, is there something that I can multiply 7 by uh, by itself to make? No. And therefore, seven, uh, root 7 is a third. Root 64. Is it possible to find the square root of 64? Well, the root of 64 is plus or minus 8. And therefore, 64, root 64 is not a third. Root 2. Root 2 is often one that people uh, just mix up because of the fact that they uh, often think 1 times 1 is 2, but it's not. 1 times 1 is 1. 2, there is nothing I can multiply by itself to make, and therefore root 2 is a third. And root 21, well that is between uh, 16 and 25, two square numbers that we do know. Therefore it is not, um, it's not a square number, it is a third root 21. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at um, multiplying and dividing with thirds. I'm going to give you a couple of uh, questions here and just see if we can um, work out if there is a rule that we could use in order to do this. So I'm not actually using um, I'm not using thirds here, I'm using actual square numbers. So I've got root 4 times root 9. But root 4, what is root 4? Well root 4 is 2. And what is root 9? Well, that is 3. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of the 9 is 3. If I multiply them together, I get 6. Now, 6, if I was thinking about square roots, what is 6 the square root of? Well, it is the square root of 36. Therefore, root 4 times root 9 is the square root of 36. Let's do the same with 25 and 4. Well, the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. Well, that's giving me 10. What is 10 the square root of? Well, 10 is the square root of 100. Is there a way that I could have gotten straight to those answers from the original questions? Well, let's just take a quick look at the numbers. 4, 9, 36. 4 times 9 is 36. 25, 4, 100. 25 times 4 is 100. Therefore, what we actually have here is a very quick rule about thirds. The square root of a times the square root of b is exactly the same as the square root of a, b, or a times b. So let's see if we can use that with some real thirds. Root 3 times root 5. How would I simplify that? Well, the quick answer is that all we need to do is multiply the two numbers together and write it under a root symbol. So 3 times 5 is 15. Root 6 times root 6. Well, if I do that, well, that's going to be 6 times 6 is 36. Now, this one is quite a special one. Root 36. We actually know the answer to that one. The square root of 36 is... 6. So what that's also done is it's shown us one other very special rule about thirds. A third multiplied by itself creates just the number under the square root sign. So root a times root a equals a. That is another general rule that we can have for thirds. So how about dividing with thirds? Well, let's do the same as we did in the previous question. Uh, let's have a look at, just see if we can work out the answers to these. So root 16, well, that is 4. Root 4, well, that is 2. And so that gives me an answer 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, 2 is the square root of 4. 
So how could I have gotten from root 16 divided by root 4 to an answer of root 4? Well, let's have a look, see if we can spot it from the other one. So root 64, that's 8. Root 4 is 2. If I divide those, I get 4. Root 4 is the square root of 16. So what is the connection? 16, 4, 4. Well, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 64, 4, 16. 64 divided by 4 is 16. So what we've actually got here is something that follows quite nicely from the multiplying. That if we take the square root of a and we divide it by the square root of b, we get the square root of a divided by b. So we can use that now with real thirds in order to find some results. So root 20 divided by root 10. Well, all I need to think here is I can write that as a single uh, square root, 20 over 10. And so that is 20 over 10, 2. So that is just root 2. Root 16 divided by root 2. Well, that is going to be, again, one big third. Root 16 over 2. 16 over 2 is 8. And so we get the square root of 8. Next, we're going to look at simplifying thirds. How can we take um, take a very large third and simplify it down to something which is a little bit easier to use? Well, it all comes down to the method that we've just been thinking about in terms of multiplication. We can split root 48 into two different thirds multiplied together. But the key here is I would like to find a square number which would is a factor of 48. So what square numbers have we got? Let's just make a quick list. So we've got 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and so on. They're probably the only ones we're ever actually going to be requiring in this case. So 48, which of these numbers is uh, would go into 48? Well, 1 would work, and 4 would work, and 16 would work, and that's about it. Now the question is, which one am I going to use? Well, I always want to find the highest factor possible. So I want the biggest square number which will go into 48. And in this case, that is 16. So I have root 16. But the question is, what do I have to multiply 16 by to make 48? Well, 16 times three is 48. Now again, this doesn't seem to be that much simpler, but the idea is we know the answer to root 16 the answer to root 16 is 4. And so now when we bring them back together, we can just call root 48 4 root 3. Okay, so let's try to simplify some more thirds. Um, and in each case, all we want to do is look at how can we split each of these into two square roots, which can multiply together to make root 75 where one of them is the largest square number possible, which is a factor. So in the number root 75, we need to find a square number, which is a factor of 75. And if we have a look, I've made a list at the bottom of some of the square numbers. Well, the largest one is going to be 25. And 25, how many 25s make 75? Well, it is three. Therefore, all we can then say is, well, root 25, we know that that is five. And root three, well, that is root three. And so root 75 will be the same as five root three. For root 45, again, we want to think about two square roots, which would multiply to make root 45. And we want to find the largest square number, which goes into 45. Well, that would be nine. And uh, nine goes into 45 five times. And so when we bring this back together, root 9 we know is 3 and root 5 is just root 5 so 3 root 5 and lastly we've got root 12 and so what square number goes into 12 well that is going to be 4 and 4 times 3 makes 12 and so root 12 we would call 2 root 3 
So finally, with adding and subtracting thirds, this is where we need to bring together everything that we've just looked at. Because in order to be able to add and subtract with thirds, first of all, we need to simplify them so that we can see if we can get a common term within them. So, root 12. Root 12 would be root 4, root 3. And root 27, well, that would be root 9, root 3 because 4 times 3 is 12 and 9 times 3 is 27. And with that, we know that root 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 3. And root 9 we know is 3, so 3 root 3. Now the reason that this is useful is if you think about algebra, if I said what is 2x plus 3x, well you would say that is 5x. And this is exactly the same. x is just a number that we don't yet know. And root 3 is exactly the same. Root 3 is a number that we don't know the full ent entire value of. So if I have two of them and I add another three of them, I can just treat them as x's. And so this would be 5 root 3. Let's have a go with root 50 take away root 32. Well, what is the biggest square number that goes into 50? Well, that's 25. So it's going to be root 25 root 2 take away... Um, and the biggest square number that goes into 32, well, that's going to be 16, and root 2 again. And so 20, root 25, root 2, well, that's going to be 5, root 2, take away 4, root 2. And so if I had 5 of something and I took 4 of them away, I would be left with just 1 of them. And so the answer is just root 2. And then root 28 plus root 63, well... What is the largest square number that goes into 28? It's in fact, it's just 4. Ah, it's root 4, root 7. What's the squ uh, largest square uh, square number that goes into 63? Well, that is 9. And it's 9 and 7. The square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 7. And the square root of 9 is 3, so that's 3 root 7. So if I add them together, if I had 2 of them plus 3 of them, I would have 5 root 7. And so we end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in June 2018, higher paper 1. Um, so um, if, first of all, paper 1 is important. That means it's a non-calculator question. The reason that's important is we could actually just type this into a calculator and get the answer straight out um, if we were allowed to. But this is a non-calculator paper, so we're going to have to do everything by hand. And it says that root 5, brackets, root 8 plus root 18 can be written in the form a root 10, where a is an integer, find the value of a. So basically what it's asking us to do here is to expand this expression. And what does it mean to expand? Well, it means to multiply. So we're going to do root 5 times root 8 to begin with. And our rule for multiplying with thirds is that we can write it as a single third where we multiply the numbers together. So 5 times 8 is 40 and far, uh, root 5 times root 18 again same process um, if I multiply 5 by 18 I get 90 and so this is saying I have root 40 plus root 90 and we need to simplify this now there is a clue in what we've been uh, told in the question it says it is going to be a root 10 so what that's actually telling me is that each of these numbers I want to separate out into something root 10. And that's handy because 10 goes into 40 and 10 goes into 90. So how many root 10s make root 40? Well, that's going to be root 4. How many root 10s make root 90? Well, that's going to be root 9. And they're going to be added together. What is two, uh, four, uh, root 4 root 10? Well, it's 2 root 10. And what is root 9 root 10? Well, that's 3 root 10. If I add them together, what do I get? Well, 2 root 10 plus 3 root 10 is 5 root 10. And it's said that we should get something root 10, where A is an integer, a whole number. It certainly is. And therefore, A equals 5.